Tigers. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. As a chapter on this Monday, the fourth, uh, the third of uh, April, and we're looking at the Dow uh, up uh, three hundred and four points. But look at this. He has the little E mini, the one minute chart. Some people said they they liked uh, they'd like me to uh, articulate my uh, technical indicators a little bit more during the show. So look, he has a long rectangle formation stuck between about eight o'clock last night at about the 4133 level to a low of about 4129, 28. Um, and it just stayed there went to peak A, B, C, D, E. It even went to that E just above that resistance. And then what happens is if there's a pullback and it cuts halfway into the I need to draw this over. I didn't want to make it too messy, but I'll do this right now. Halfway into the rectangle formation and takes that out, there's a real good chance it could go all the way to the bottom and even take that out. No, it held that beautifully. And then at about 9.30 this morning, <clears throat> it just took off. And we went from the 41.30 uh, level and all the way to the 41. Uh, let's see, the high was 52.5. I think 50, uh, 25, and it started to pull back. I do have this as a peak E, but in the 10-minute chart, and this is going to be really fascinating, in the 10-minute chart, there's a wider rectangle. It goes longer than that. It goes all the way to uh, the beginning of April. That's on Friday. There's that rectangle. We went above it. And because we've gone above it, it makes that whole area of 4140 very near term important support. But over the period of the day, if there is a slide below 4123, then watch that 40, 41, uh, 16, 200 period exponential moving average. Now, why do I say that? Because I'm not complaining. <laughs> we are along the Dow and uh, uh, aggressively along the day, I should say. And within that context, uh, it was a little bit of a surprise to me because I did have a signal on Friday that I mentioned to subscribers uh, that the uh, the Chapman Wave chin gauge was very high, and that says we should get a sharp rally in the S&P futures, which should help the general market. But at the same time, that extension to the upside on Friday that last hour move almost always, unless there's a powerful gap up move the next session, usually we fill in about 20 to even 50% of that last hour's gain. Well, we did that a little bit in the S&P overnight, but we didn't do it in the Dow. Dow held very well. And one of the reasons is I think that we've rotated back to where the Dow is now the lead dog. The dog, the DOG is the one-to-one -one short. I shouldn't mention that in the same breath, but it's the it's the leader because of the the, the unusual mix of the Dow 30, and now you're starting to see a little bit of leadership back again into the Dow, and it's rotated from the the QQQ, and I'll show you the QQQ right now. They are the QQQ is down a dollar seventy four at three hundred nineteen point nineteen. In a leg C, it should make a peak D because in the chart, oh, I should show that. All right, let me just do that here. For those of you new to market, cancel. Whoops, you made a mistake there. Okay, here we go. In the chart wing methodology, we're always looking for the, identify the lowest low bar. And yes, I do chart wave notation, trough A, trough B on the way down, they're called troughs. But I really look at the technicals and other indicators for the, the low. Uh, on the upside, I'm absolutely faithful to the P, D, E, and F, and G that we look at. But in the meantime, what we look for is a starting point. Count each successively higher high, alphabetize them sequentially with higher uh, with the uppercase on the way up. A, B, C, D, that's four higher peaks, but it can still go five, six, seven higher peaks after that. E, F, and G, there's never an H. So at D, other things can happen. What you want to see is a buy signal upgraded to a buy mode. And the implication of the Chapman wave is that that symbol that you're following should, the only thing that doesn't do it is the VIX index. It does it periodically, but that's not the methodology that applies there because it's a sentiment gauge. What we're looking at is in the every other symbol, 
if you get to a peak B, there's a good, and the technicals are still strong, and it gets upgraded from a buy signal to a buy mode, you should get to D. What's the implication here? Well, the implication is, slide this away right there, take it out, okay? The implication is that within the context of, oops, I just didn't do that correctly. Let me do this, okay. Yeah, within the, the implication is that within the context of uh, this symbol that you're following, if it's gone to a leg C, pulls back, there should be another squeak to it. I, doesn't, I shouldn't say squeak, but there should be another move up to a leg D. At D, other things can happen. Your objective is to get to D, then we use other chapter-made methodologies. Well, QQQ is a leg C. If it goes above Friday's high of 321.17, goes to uh, 0.18, that's, that extends today's leg C. If it's tomorrow or the next day, it goes to a leg D. Here we go. Uh, S&P, now this is going to be very interesting. So the S&P is up 0.22%, uh, Dow's up 0.96%. And the QQQ is down uh, about 13. Uh, how much is that? QQQ is down 0.04%. So now what we're looking at is the S&P has already gone to a leg D. But look how nicely the weekly chart is starting to form. So I did this for my subscribers to my opening call. Every weekend, occasionally I'm away uh, and I just cannot do it. Like last weekend, what I did is, I wonder if I've got the chart right here. I think I do. Okay, I've got the chart right here. Because I was out of town and I wasn't able, I, I, I'm setting it up so that I'll be able to do it. I haven't been able to do it up until now because I need to go put it on another computer so I can do my video, my hour-long video over the weekend for the overview. Uh, but I did send this out. I said, I've got to send this out, even though I, I just I really don't have time, but I'm going to do it. So I said in the Chapman Wave, this is called the Dark News Cloud Cover. I look at internal lows and residual lows. I look at internal high and residual high. And what does it mean? It's like an earthquake that has an aftershock. Well, we identified correctly the internal low and then the residual low uh, earlier in uh, December. Uh, then we we got the this whole area. I said it's just this is a huge topping area. Be careful. And we saw a big pullback. And then I said I'm calling this in early March. I'm calling this. An internal low, there was a rally just above the 14-period moving average of the daily Dow chart, and then a retest, and we went to a residual low. And I said, I believe this is a residual low, and we've been buying the uh, Dow, the the U-Dow, three times long Dow, uh, from the from the low. Uh, and we just uh, we keep buying it, and uh, now we, we it's had a really good gain. But at the same time, the idea was that I think – and we won't know for sure until we look back in a couple of weeks' time that I think we made an internal low and a residual low. And now let's go to the real thing in real time. Let's move that away. This is it today. This is the very same chart, except I'm going to do this. I'm going to expand it like that and show you. There it is. That's where I identified it. And look where we are. We're going back to the midpoint of the long uh, sideways channel, remember my rule of thumb for the two channels, the large rectangle formation has one, and the long narrow one says, if you break that good point, I was showing you that in the immediate moment ago, be careful because you could take out the low of the rectangle, and we did. Now we're going right back to that trend. I'll be back to my 140. Very nice. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open. 
to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, right, folks, we're back. So we're looking at ExxonMobil uh, up six at 150.70. Why? I thought, wait, aren't the Saudis our friends? Uh, didn't they just uh, cut uh, production by... Was it 30 or 40 or 50 percent? Well, crude oil is up 4.74 at 80.40, right on the 200 period moving average. My, my analysis when I first heard it this morning and I said, oh, should I quickly have subscribers grab some of the oil service stocks? And then I said, wait, wait, you can't just do that on news. You need some follow through. So what I want you to see is, does crude oil, is this a breakout? Well, it's not a breakout because it's back in the channel. Remember, I drew these rectangles here. I said, this is the distance from the high that was made the week of the 11th of November of 91-something, uh, no, 9387. And I said it could go down to the the base that was made. Uh, that was the ninth, the week of the 9th of December at 70.80. <clears throat> then we bounced. And what I like to do is in the rectangle, take the top part and make it like a propeller shaft and say, well, we could go down. And I said, my thinking is that and at the time we were in the 71 area or so. And I said, I think we can go down to the uh, 60, 64 to 62 area, maybe even 60. And I drew in this rectangle right here. So this rectangle says from that high that was made that's the high around about uh on the second second week of second of december uh, it was at 8406 we can go down and a measured move would take you down to the 60 62 level well we went down to 64 64 32 in the continuous contract and now we've bounced but we're only back in the rectangle this propeller shaft particular pattern very often says <clears throat> if you have the propeller blade, that's the upside there, and then the, the fulcrum for the propeller shaft, and then you've got the blade on the downside. I'm just making it as simple as possible. <clears throat> and then there's a, not a break down lower, but you go back into the rectangle. Have a look to see if there was an H pattern. What's the H pattern? In the Chapman Wave, we often look at, oh, did I lose that? No, I've got it right here. Uh, I look at three core. Now, where did that go? Three core formations. Oh, there it is. And it's a straight line. It's a straight line up. Here we go. The straight line up, straight line down. That's one. 
cup formation or a V-shaped formation going from one point down then back to that point. Or it's red, because that's green, because if it takes out that left side height, it can be very good. And on the downside, it's an arch, a red arch, because if you take out, or an inverted V, if you take out the left side low, it can go a lot lower. That's why we call this the dreaded H. Well, look on the left side. You had your H pattern that held beautifully. It went to, a, uh, had another H, so it's another arch, so it's, it's an H it goes to an M formation. Then it decisively took out the left side low, and that gives you a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. So we've got that. And now you've got your straight line up. Now I'm thinking there's a chance that we make some kind of a rectangle formation because this is a very, very emotional uh, a price point that we're looking at. Why? Because you've already accomplished this pattern with the breakdown. Are you now going to form some kind of an H pattern that takes out the upside? The, in other words, a Y, a reverse Y, which is the exact opposite of the one to the downside. Well, the way I look at this is <clears throat> it's, it's really important information. It says that we're being, that the market uh, positives that we've been looking at is now being attacked by another force that says, oops, that inflation factor is oh, coming right back again. And I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, but you held the 200 period moving average right at this moment in the daily chart. You're in the rectangle with a lot of resistance at 84, but 80.45 80, 80 to 80.40, 80, 80 I'm sorry, to 84, that's a, lot of, that's a lot of price. So what happens here is really important. What happens with a CVX? Where did I type that? Where did that go? Hello? Anybody? Else? Yep, there it is. C C V X. Um, that's also had a huge spike up 7.4 7 7.70 at 170.89, up 4.7 percent. Peak A. This is leg B. Way above the 200 period moving average, almost falling. So this is saying that these multinational oils are acting extremely well. They are just at this particular moment in the sweet spot, if I may use the sweet crude oil uh, analogy there. Uh, but if you're looking at Schlumberger, and this is the uh, oil and gas uh, drillers, what happens there in the next couple of days is going to be really important because if they and rig, which I, we've had before, we don't have it now, I haven't had it for a long time, which spiked up and is kind of stalling here at up 55 at 691. These are the stocks I want to monitor because if they have a, a second wind after this spectacular move that they've had uh, going from like the October low into the uh, uh, January, February highs, this is going to put pressure on the market, all right? But we do have, which one? We have CVX as part of the Dow, so it's probably helping the Dow somewhat. And what we're all looking at here is, a uh, question came in. Let me just see what that question is. I'll have a look at that in a moment. Uh, what we're all looking at here is you've got gold holding very well. <clears throat> uh, where did I type that? Oh, I looked in a, uh, there we go. Gold. Gold is looking pretty good. It hasn't given back much. It looked like it wanted to do yesterday. It looked like it was this morning. Went down to 1965. Now it's up 16. So when we talk about inflation, um, there's a lot to worry about because I don't think this market, uh, certainly the Fed doesn't want to see inflation continue like this. So it was a little bit of a surprise to me to see that the buying pressure that we saw on Friday actually followed through. It's a pleasure to see because, because we are long, but it's a, it's a little disturbing to say, is this purely fund management coming in the last day, couple of days of the, of the month and now the first couple of days of the next month? And all of a sudden Wednesday, and I'm anticipating that the Dow in leg C, a huge leg C, does pull back and then goes to a leg D. And then I think we've got to be a little bit careful. So I'm trying to give you this overview uh, nothing's really changed other than this big spike in crude oil. Let me just show you something in the TLT, which is pulling, uh, which is rallying so that the yields are coming down. So 106.75 in the TLT, uh, and that's that's within a range. And I've been saying for a while that it, my eye says yields are in a range at this particular point. Question about SND, what the SND is, sounds familiar. Oh, no, I've not, Smart Sand Inc., 
I know it's smart sand in case, but it's up at a dollar ninety four. It's up eighteen cents, up ten percent. Yeah, the the two hundred period moving average of two hundred two. I think that's going to be significant resistance on that particular stock. And if that's the case, uh, then and, and it has filled in the gap that was made earlier in March. This is good action because the MACD is just now crossing. Oh, it hasn't yet. It needs to cross positive. The, the stochastic is rallying. But I'm suspecting that this is an emotional response to something. Smart Sand Inc. Uh, well, I want, uh, yes. Uh, oh, it's the oil environment. Okay. So because it's in the oil environment, what I would say is if it can close above 212 by Wednesday, no, if it can close above 212 through Wednesday, in other words, whatever rally it does and it goes over the 202, uh, 200 period moving average, if it can hold above that for two out of three sessions, then that's really good action. And key support is at 179, which is quite a bit lower. I'll be back. That was at 342. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. A couple of people uh, just sent. Uh, one was, uh, could I look at Royal Gold? Gosh, I used to have this notated for years, forever. I mean, from the inception, I'd notated it. Seemed to have lost that. Doesn't matter. There it is. I just redid it. We've gone from the left side, just like the Dow has done, from the left side high that was made back on the 25th of January of 131.89, plummet down to the 200 period moving average at about 112 or so, 111.53, and today's high is 131.34. So this is really good. It's just underneath that previous high. It's in leg E. The MACD is good. Stochastic's fantastic. 97.73, it means it's 2.27 away from 100%, which never it never gets reached. Although we did see a start. Oh, I should have written it down and taped it. Somewhere. I think I did, actually. I can't find it there. Uh, um, 
it never gets to 100%. So this is very, very strong. And this is suggesting that Royal Gold, and I believe this is a royalty company, um, RGLD trading 131.25 up a dollar 54 today is telling us that gold is in play because the royalty company wouldn't be doing this well if they weren't uh, if it if it wasn't receiving good benefits uh, and as a, as a, a monthly chart uh, it needs a lot of work to be able to break above the hundred into the 149 area 150 to really say I'm breaking out to one of the highest levels I've been in and at this particular stage. Uh, it's the technicals in the in the monthly chart are improving a lot, but I like to see the stochastic not at 62 percent, but at about 77 percent right now, and it's not. And the 76 percent in the in the weekly says that can still improve as well. So yes, you've got your V-shaped pattern right here. So what happens by the well, let me get the date right by the week of this is the week of the fifth. The week of between the week of the twelfth and the week of the that's sorry the week of the tenth that's next week and the following week if Royal Gold is trading above 134 to 136 if it hits that once and then closes above it on any daily thing to help the weekly chart I think that would be absolutely incredible action but right now it says it's tremendous support at 127 to 125. I thought I'd just go through that because it's really important. Uh, another question came in where did I go where did it go where did, oh I wrote it down. Um uh, yes uh the, was I wrote it down. Okay. So a question came in with and the the question was to do with why why would the VIX index, which has been so weak for so long, no, the question was what would what would change my mind about uh, the the trend in based on the VIX index? I, I haven't got it right in front of me, but it was a question that came in late Friday. Um, and all I can say is that if the volatility index at any three day period, starts to trade it can't just go there once like it does so often but if if it starts to trade it's at 1929 holding key very near term up to a very minor three percent increase in in, in the, the trend line if it's able at at 1928 today's low is 1928 it was 1983 at the high if at any point over a period of i'm not you say two out of three days this is different it has to be three days out of five if it is holding above 20, 23.15 and it holds above that 23.15 on a closing basis, three out of five sessions, it did that in that last big move down, that 2,000 point down move in the Dow that we were talking about in March. If it's able to hold that particular position and we start to see triple digit declines in the in the Dow on a, on a two three day basis and the S&P has a minus 65 on a two three day basis I think then we're in not just a short term pullback but it's more short and I can't even say intermediate term but I'm saying it's more than just a, a, a one week pullback it's like a two to three week pullback so that's the thing that so that was the, that was the answer to the question and I'm just saying, you ask me a question, I'm giving the answer, but so far, I don't see it happening, not not just yet. Next question came in. Uh, how about the daily candle XOM? Yeah, that, that, you see, when I was looking at RIG, this is, uh, RIG is, oops, there it goes. Uh, RIG is uh, Transocean. That, that said, yeah, I've spiked to the upside, but if I don't hold this gain and I start to close below 681, which so far is the low of the day, to open was 698 and I went all the way to 711, XOM, this is the multinational, is holding way at the top part. So, so far, now remember, I I always get asked about gaps. I have not, gaps are just like anything. It's like a doji candle. It's like a moving average. It means nothing until, so my rule of thumb is, a gap means nothing as long as you're moving away from it. As soon as you get back close to it, it becomes a magnet. It's like a moving average. It's like anything else. Any 
technical aspect of great importance, the further away you move from it, the less import it has, and the closer you get, the more it becomes a magnet. Just think of it that way. Gaps, moving averages become magnets when they, as you get closer, all right? And that's what you have to break through. Right? If you want to continue the direction that you're in and there's a, there's a resistance or a support, you want to break it decisively. Okay, so, so within that question uh, about Exxon, it's a weekly. Now, it's so rare that you get a gap in the weekly chart, but it's just purely coincidence. I don't put import into uh, a gap on a weekly basis. Oh, it's there. I'm not denying it. I'm just saying it happened on a Monday. It could have happened on a Tuesday. Then you would have had your gap on a weekly basis. So that's just it's just saying something important that over the weekend, look what happened. Poof, you went from red, uh, from pink in the nine period moving average to the weekly chart not even two hours into the trading day. So we've got the whole week to wait, which is a shortened week because we wrap up on Thursday. You want to see this, what happens there. Uh, so that's just, but look at that monthly chart. You did your one-to-one. -one. This is, the, this is the, the best extension you can ever get in a Chapman Wave one-to-one -one breakout of the falling axe formation. Look at that pink, showed you that you had to break that. Normally I'd go down to the bottom. I did it at some point and then I raised it because I'm always a little conservative here. I say, Look, I, I, I don't want to go to the outside when we're just now breaking the upside. So I start off at the low part right there. And that would take you to that level where we did it very quickly. Now you've done an exact. It's unbelievable how this works on a monthly basis. Look at this. It hit it exactly. The one to the, my rule of thumb in a falling axe formation on the upside and the downside. If you take it out, there could be a one to one move to the upside as long as you're taking out the left side uh, left side peaks of importance and look how many we took out and now you've done that to the upside you've gone actually a little bit further but the actual diagram itself takes you to exactly where we are right now all right so that's accomplished it but the fact that it's a monthly chart is really important and it says cannot deny it this is holding extremely well but i don't know how long this crude oil gap to the upside just at the moment is going to last. I got a feeling we we fill some of that, but it's telling us be wary. This is remember for years I used to say I don't like to th think of shorting gold because anything can happen overnight, and the first thing that gets moved to the upside is gold. Well, we're looking at that in crude oil. So crude oil is in play. It's back in the rectangle formation. So I've answered that. Now it's just a little bit of okay, the general market. Let me see my, my, my one and my 10 minute charts. Yeah, so this went to a big D extension uh, alternate count. All right, I'll be back and we'll talk about it. This is the E mini, and we're looking at peak the ABC. There's your D. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. 
Educating Investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So we look at the GLD. This is what I'm looking at. So it's made a peak deep doji candle of the weekly. Uh, the monthly has really improved a lot, but it's still, uh, it's getting into the wicks of Ju about July, August or so of 2020, the long wick of January or February um, of 22. And they didn't hold because they pulled back very sharply. Now it's filling. And on based on the wick, the technique that I use for these wicks, if the if gold on a, it's a monthly chart, but if on a weekly basis, uh, usually I'd say a daily, but I want to go to the weekly. On a weekly basis, if there's a close of over 187, it's at 184.68, that says there's a really good chance we're going to try to go to the top of that candle from March <clears throat> 22 of 193.30. That's the way I'd look at it. And if there is a pullback um, underneath 179 on the daily basis, it says that, yes, the rectangle that I drew in here, in fact, I have to draw a little differently, I have to go to that low right there. That rectangle, we're in the rectangle, we're trying to fill it up. It should go towards the high there and then pull back. But so far, gold is absolutely holding extremely well. Question came in about, well, where was it? Oh, um, Netflix. Uh, Netflix uh, trading at uh, 344.22, down to $1.29. And it has made leg C. There should be a pullback and then a leg D. I'm thinking there's going to be a lot of resistance between this doji candle of the 17th of Feb with a high of 349.20, uh, uh, 349.08, and the low the previous day on the 16th of 350.71. So this is a little gap. So I think we can get there. And then I think we go sideways. That's what this V-shaped pattern is saying in the monthly chart. But it's improved a lot. But I'm not expecting that it becomes a leader at all, although it's looking way better than some of the other stocks in that category. Amazon is made it, making a peak C today if there's no new recovery high above uh, Friday's high. It's kind of stalling here a little bit. If you're looking at uh, Apple, Apple spiked higher. It's only in leg, mm, come on, Apple. There, yeah, it's only in leg C right now. It's acting well. Finally, it's gotten above the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. Right there, right there, look. This is a repellent zone from the high that was made in Apple the 7th of January of 2022 at 182.94. Didn't I write that in? I should have been. And then it plummets down to the most recent low, January January of this year. It goes to, on the week of January the 6th, it goes to a 124.17. I may as well just type that in, 124.17. 17. Where did I type it? I typed it in the wrong place. Here we go. 124.17. I think it was 1623. Okay. And now we're, look, 40 points higher, over 40 points higher. That's really good action. And for the first time, we've broken out in since it was uh, last year, about August, where we just for one moment we broke above the inside track repellent zone. We went under it. And we're making lower lows and lower highs, but now on the way up, we're making higher highs and higher lows. And that says the whole area of 150, 160 to 153 
is going to be key support in any serious pullback we get in the market, if there's going to be one in April. Our next question came in. Where was it? Uh, Oh, that's right. It was on this side. Uh, could I look at? Oh, natural gas. Yeah, sure. So what I said Friday was um, if there was a close, if it could get to the two. Oh, now I can't remember exactly. what I think it was using the UNG. The UNG. Yes, I said if it can get a, a close above 683, that would be the first time that I'd be able to look at it and saying, how did the... MACD handled that, and how did the stochastic? Well, the stochastic remains at 8.76, and UNG is down 28 ticks at 665. So as I said before, this is a process that is telling us that the rally that I just disbelieved, although it was fantastic, I mean, it was about a 28 to 32% rally from 714 to the high of 714 back in uh, February, and it runs all the way to the March high, of of nine ninety nine, that's a that's a stupendous rally. I mean, that's a rally that you would expect over months in anything else, but it then capped down and continued making lower lows and lower highs. And look, the pink nine period moving average it couldn't cross above it. So I'm saying that this is a process that says this, and I've been saying this forever, and I don't know the answer. I'm just making it as a, as a question statement. In other words. Is there something wrong with natural gas that is doing that? There must be. There must be a glut somewhere. Otherwise, this wouldn't have happened. Not only that, the move up here, that steady move up every day, you saw a little bit of a gain, a little bit of a gain, single leg A going all the way from for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight or nine bars with a 30% gain. And then you get to peak A minus because it's that Eiffel Tower straight up, straight down. So there's something going on. And I personally would wait for UNG to, to formulate some kind of structure that says to me, whew, now I'm starting to see buying because I'm seeing higher highs and higher lows. Until you start to see, this might be the start. Maybe uh, Tuesday or Wednesday we get a gap into the, uh, we move into the gap between the pink and the, the black 14 period moving average, 704 to 728 in the continuous, no, that is in the UNG, the United States Natural Gas Fund. So with that said, I, I'm a little cautious, just a, on a daily basis, saying to subscribers, I didn't want to add anything here. We've got really nice positions. I don't want to mess around. I just drew this in during the break. I think some of you saw me do that. I drew in the Chapman Wave arch formation, the left side, right side price time match. It was not to any midpoint. It was to a particular candle. And I put in the X right there. It came in two sessions early. It took it out. And now the uh, S&P Futures are only at 4.50 at 4,142. I think that th there's going to be a give back here, and they might, there might be just one news-related thing that says, all right, we pull back Tuesday, and then Wednesday there's just one maybe pop to the upside to get the Dow to get to D. It doesn't have to, but it almost always does. Go to Chapman Way Peak D, and then you've got to be a little careful. So here we go. I'll do this before the break comes. See, we went right to uh, 33,630, 2.90. That's above the previous high. That's a good sign, but we need to close above it to be really positive. The MACD is good. Stochastic is fabulous at 92.88. On balance volume isn't overboard. It's doing very nicely in the daily. The weekly charts improve. The monthly chart is improving. I look at the S&P. S&P is a little different because the S&P took out that left side higher over there. Now the 41.95 high of February is a big challenge. We're at 41. 10. I mean, we've got a long way to go, 80, 85, 84 points. So what we're looking at here, the stochastic is fabulous at 94%. The MACD is good. On balance volume is rallying, not overbought. So I'd see enough strength that there could be just one, a residual pop. It's almost like we're looking at the internal high here. We have to pull back and then make the residual high, and then we start to pull back. This is only on the daily short-term chart. The weekly charts improved a lot. Look at the QQQ, one, two, three, there we go. Broke out above the 313.38 major high that it made uh, back in Feb. And here we are down 2.18 to 318.70, making a peak C. I don't see any phantom peak. I see nothing, but this can only be a peak C at this point. I, there could be an instant restart. This is a G slash C. That could be. That, I don't want to get into fancy anything. This is a brand new buy signal for buy mode. It should be this week. 
guys have 254 points as a substitute. <laughs> TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. .com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. So I don't really want to make the claim that we might have seen the high of the, uh, for the day right now um, without some kind of verification of what I'm really looking at. Number one. I was anticipating some kind of a give back of the big gains of uh, Friday. That's normal. And this is a gap up. So now let's just go to our chart. This is the one I show my subscribers every day, every market day with my newsletter. And we've spiked all the way up. I, I've, oh, I just moved something here. Okay. This is leg C. And what I said is, that the, in the left side, right side price time match to the 33,572 high, I'm expecting the next couple of days. Well, we did it, not only that, we broke above. You see these little green uh, numbers here? This is Chapman Wave automated resistance levels. And in the 120 minute chart, we extended leg D. So the evidence to me says there's a really good chance that this was more a kind of an emotional follow through buying. People felt that they missed out and that there should be some pullback, but there'll be enough residual strength in the Dow and I thought in the QQQ to have one big spike to the upside because the S&P, as I said, has already made its peak D, a leg D. That's what you expect in, the, in a buy signal to buy mode in the Chapman Wave methodology. But the, the Dow is only a leg C and it needs probably a pullback before it can go to a leg D and QQQ. 
uh, is it? It will be a peak C if the, the the high of Friday, which is what did I say? It was three twenty one something or other. Let me just see if I can see that right now. Uh, three twenty one seventeen. If that's not taken out today, that'll make a peak C, and then you can move back. It doesn't tell you how long. It could be a couple of days. I don't like the one three six rule broken. In this case, one two three four. Five broke it to the upside, so that was good. So that's still upside acceleration. But I think on a very short term base intraday, I think we're going to be pulling back. Have a wonderful day. Stay tuned for Steve Rose, great program. And the rest of the day, check out the opening call, and I'll see you tomorrow.